Has lightning ever happened during a snowstorm? Yes, it is possible to have lightning and thunder when it is snowing. In fact, winter storms have been known to produce very powerful lightning strokes. Has lightning ever happened during a snowstorm? Yes, it is possible to have lightning and thunder when it is snowing. In fact, winter storms have been known to produce very powerful lightning strokes. What are the chances that I will be struck by lightning? The chance of being struck by lightning at least once in your lifetime is about 1 in 600,000. What are the chances that I will be struck by lightning? The chance of being struck by lightning at least once in your lifetime is about 1 in 600,000. Am I safe from lightning if I hide indoors? Well, you are generally safer to stay indoors, but not 100% safe. Most people who are struck by lightning are injured when they are outside. And many injuries and deaths occur when people stand next to trees, so trees are not the best place to find shelter. There have been incidents, however, when people inside their homes have been injured as lightning runs through power lines and pipes and can escape through appliances and plumbing indoors. In one incident that occurred in Chicago Heights, Illinois, on October 24, 1991, a lightning stroke made its way through a cable line, entering a house and causing a bed to catch fire. Such cases are quite rare, however. Am I safe from lightning if I hide indoors? Well, you are generally safer to stay indoors, but not 100% safe. Most people who are struck by lightning are injured when they are outside. And many injuries and deaths occur when people stand next to trees, so trees are not the best place to find shelter. There have been incidents, however, when people inside their homes have been injured as lightning runs through power lines and pipes and can escape through appliances and plumbing indoors. In one incident that occurred in Chicago Heights, Illinois, on October 24, 1991, a lightning stroke made its way through a cable line, entering a house and causing a bed to catch fire. Such cases are quite rare, however. How does a lightning rod work?
invented by Benjamin Franklin, 1706-1790, around 1750, the lightning rod is designed to provide lightning bolts with a safe path to ground the electricity so that it does not damage a building. Lightning rods have actually become a bit more important to have on a home or other building in recent years. Because the metal pipes that used to be installed for indoor plumbing and that could serve as lightning rods are being replaced by non-conductive PVC pipes. How does a lightning rod work? Invented by Benjamin Franklin, 1706-1790, around 1750, the lightning rod is designed to provide lightning bolts with a safe path to ground the electricity so that it does not damage a building. Lightning rods have actually become a bit more important to have on a home or other building in recent years. Because the metal pipes that used to be installed for indoor plumbing and that could serve as lightning rods are being replaced by non-conductive PVC pipes. Is static electricity similar to lightning? Yes. When you generate a static charge by, for example, wearing wool socks and rubbing your feet on a shag carpet, and then touching a piece of furniture or a person. The spark that is released is just like a miniature bolt of lightning. Static electricity charges can generate 40,000 volts or more. Which as some people know can be damaging to electronics, such as computers. Is static electricity similar to lightning? Yes. When you generate a static charge by, for example, wearing wool socks and rubbing your feet on a shag carpet, and then touching a piece of furniture or a person. The spark that is released is just like a miniature bolt of lightning. Static electricity charges can generate 40,000 volts or more. Which as some people know can be damaging to electronics, such as computers. If I stand next to a tall object, Will I be safe from lightning? People get this idea from the concept that lightning rods on top of buildings are designed to attract lightning bolts and protect the building from damage. Actually, standing next to a tall object like a telephone pole or tree is no guarantee you won't be hit by the lightning stroke. Lightning will often hit the ground right next to a taller object. If I stand next to a tall object, will I be safe from lightning? People get this idea from the concept that lightning rods on top of buildings 
are designed to attract lightning bolts and protect the building from damage. Actually, standing next to a tall object like a telephone pole or tree is no guarantee you won't be hit by the lightning stroke. Lightning will often hit the ground right next to a taller object. How hot is lightning? The temperature of the air around a bolt of lightning is about 54,000 degrees Fahrenheit. 30,000 degrees Celsius, which is six times hotter than the surface of the sun. In cloud-to-ground lightning, energy seeks the shortest route to Earth. Which could be through a person's shoulder, down the side of the body, through the leg, and into the ground. As long as the lightning does not pass across the heart or spinal column, the victim can usually survive. How hot is lightning? The temperature of the air around a bolt of lightning is about 54,000 degrees Fahrenheit. 30,000 degrees Celsius, which is six times hotter than the surface of the sun. In cloud-to-ground lightning, energy seeks the shortest route to Earth. Which could be through a person's shoulder, down the side of the body, through the leg, and into the ground. As long as the lightning does not pass across the heart or spinal column, the victim can usually survive. How bright is lightning? The light from a lightning bolt is equal to the amount of illumination from about 100 million light bulbs. How bright is lightning? The light from a lightning bolt is equal to the amount of illumination from about 100 million light bulbs. What caused all the flooding in New Orleans during Hurricane Katrina? Most people now agree that the destruction of New Orleans could have largely been avoided had the canal levees, built by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, been up to the task of controlling the storm surges. Because many of the levees failed, 80% of the city was engulfed in water. What causes a flood? Flooding results when more water enters an environment than can be easily absorbed into the soil or drained away in rivers and streams. Flooding is usually caused by intense rainfalls that dump many inches of water onto an area over a short period of time, or they can also be caused by ocean swells and storm surges initiated by hurricanes and tropical storms. Tsunamis, naturally, also cause flooding.
the 2004 tsunamis that resulted in an undersea earthquake in the Indian Ocean. For instance, killed about 238,000 people in 11 surrounding countries. Most of these people died from the initial landfall of the waves and resulting floods. In addition, floods can be caused artificially, such as when a dam or levee breaks. Am I safe from lightning if I hide indoors? Well, you are generally safer to stay indoors, but not 100% safe. Most people who are struck by lightning are injured when they are outside. And many injuries and deaths occur when people stand next to trees, so trees are not the best place to find shelter. There have been incidents, however, when people inside their homes have been injured as lightning runs through power lines and pipes and can escape through appliances and plumbing indoors. In one incident that occurred in Chicago Heights, Illinois, on October 24, 1991, a lightning stroke made its way through a cable line, entering a house and causing a bed to catch fire. Such cases are quite rare, however. Are there certain times of the day when tornadoes are more likely to happen? Tornadoes can occur at any hour of the day, but 40% of them strike between 2 o'clock and 6 o'clock p. M. The danger of a nighttime tornado is that people are often asleep and unprepared for when the warnings are sounded. Do tornadoes strike in countries other than the United States and Canada? Yes but the United States keeps the best records on tornadoes. And so it is difficult to ascertain the frequency and ferocity of twisters in foreign nations. The Canadian Prairie experiences significant incidents. But one could say that these are all part and parcel of the North American conditions that are ideal for tornado formation. Other countries that have significant accounts of tornado activity include Great Britain, Italy, Western France, Brazil, Argentina, Russia, Bangladesh, China, Northern India, Pakistan, Japan, South Africa, and New Zealand. England experiences a tornado about once every year and a half, and Australia probably has more tornadoes than are witnessed. Because many of them likely occur in the outback, where the population is sparse. What is a mesocyclone? A mesocyclone is the vortex of air usually between 1 to 6 miles, 2 to 10 kilometers. In diameter often found within a supercell or other large thunderstorm with cumulonimbus clouds. Wind shear resulting in abrupt changes in wind direction or speed in the storm causes. Air to circulate in a rolling fashion parallel to the ground. 
an updraft can then orient the swirling air vertically, thus forming a vortex perpendicular to the ground. Does it have to be raining for there to be lightning? There needs to be a storm for there to be lightning. But it does not have to be raining in the same location for lightning to occur. Lightning strokes have been observed as far away as 10 miles, 16 kilometers, from where rain was actually falling. And lightning strokes may happen as much as 10 minutes after all rain has stopped. What are some of the worst floods in history caused by inclement weather? Not all lethal floods in recorded history have been caused by bad weather. For example, seawall failures in the Netherlands have. On several occasions, caused tragic floods that killed thousands. The table below, though, lists some of the worst weather-related floods in history. If I stand next to a tall object, will I be safe from lightning? People get this idea from the concept that lightning rods on top of buildings are designed to attract lightning bolts and protect the building from damage. Actually, standing next to a tall object like a telephone pole or tree is no guarantee you won't be hit by the lightning stroke. Lightning will often hit the ground right next to a taller object. What is the difference between a tornado watch and a warning? A tornado watch means that weather conditions within the next few hours are favorable for the formation of tornadoes. When a watch is issued, it is wise to listen to radio or television reports for updates. And you should make any preparations necessary in case you need to seek immediate shelter. A tornado warning means that an actual tornado has been spotted on Doppler radar. Or by an observer in your area, and you should immediately take shelter. Was the 2005 New Orleans disaster caused by a flood or a hurricane? The initial cause of the disaster was Hurricane Katrina, which whipped up tides and sea water against a very fragile levee system that protected New Orleans. The city is 49% below sea level, and so when the man-made levees broke, flood waters moved in and inundated much of the city. Why do flash floods kill so many people? Simply put, people don't seem to recognize the power of flash floods and the fact that 
even a half foot of rushing water can knock down an adult and sweep him or her away. Moving flood waters just a few feet deep are capable of pushing cars and small trucks. Floods can either drown you, or they can kill you by carrying deadly debris. The other factor, of course, is that flash floods catch people by surprise. And if they happen at night, those who are sleeping can certainly be caught unawares. Sometimes, too, people can just lack a little common sense. There have been many stories of people who were standing in dry river beds when a flash flood suddenly barreled down on them, instead of running up the river bank and to safety. They ran down river in the vain hope of outrunning the rushing waters. This is how a number of deaths occurred during the 1976 flood that hit Big Thompson, Colorado. Do tornadoes always turn counterclockwise? As a rule of thumb, a tornado in the northern hemisphere will rotate counterclockwise. While those in the southern hemisphere twist in a clockwise rotation. But, as with any rule, there are always exceptions. Anticyclonic tornadoes, rotating clockwise in the northern hemisphere, have occasionally been observed. When they do, they are typically weaker twisters associated with weak storm cells or sometimes appearing as water spouts. One of the strongest anticyclonic tornadoes was observed in 1998 near Sunnyvale, California. Even rarer but still possible is an event when a supercell generates both cyclonic and anticyclonic tornadoes. How much rain does it take to make a flood? The amount varies widely for different areas. In some U.S. western deserts, or in some large urban areas. Just a few minutes of strong rain will cause a flash flood in canyons and low-lying areas. In areas prone to greater rainfall amounts, it often takes quite a bit more rain. Sometimes a few days or weeks worth, to cause rivers to overflow and dams to fill up. Raising concerns of those who live downstream. Areas that normally receive more rainfall have better natural drainage. Systems and are usually home to plants that readily absorb the extra water. Who are storm chasers? Storm chasers are scientists and amateur storm enthusiasts who track and intercept severe thunderstorms and tornadoes. Two reasons for storm chasing are, one, to gather data to use in researching severe storms and two, to provide a visual observation of severe storms indicated on radar stations. In addition, television personnel will chase storms to produce a dramatic storm video. Storm chasing can be an extremely dangerous activity in which strong winds, heavy rain, hail, and lightning threaten one's safety. 
individuals who chase storms are trained in the behavior of severe storms. Roger Jensen 1933-2001, is generally considered the first person to be an active storm chaser. A self-trained weather observer and professional photographer. Jensen spent 50 years recording data on tornadoes as well as thunderstorms. David Hoadley, 1938. Is also considered a pioneer in the field and founder of the first newsletter on the subject, Storm Track. The first scientist who became a storm chaser was Neil Ward, 1914 1972. Who worked for the National Severe Storms Laboratory in Norman, Oklahoma. And is considered the official father of the storm chase because of his credentials. Has lightning ever happened during a snowstorm? Yes, it is possible to have lightning and thunder when it is snowing. In fact, winter storms have been known to produce very powerful lightning strokes. Has there ever been a tornado in Los Angeles? Yes, Southern California, including Los Angeles, have experienced weak tornadoes on occasion. Fortunately, no deaths have yet been reported in the state as a result. On May 22, 2008, two tornadoes touched ground in Riverside County near San Diego. A tornado warning was also issued in Los Angeles that same month. Causing minor damage to homes in the suburb of Inglewood. Los Angeles County has officially seen more than 30 tornadoes since 1918. What are the chances that I will be struck by lightning? The chance of being struck by lightning at least once in your lifetime is about 1 in 600,000. How does a lightning rod work? Invented by Benjamin Franklin, 1706 to 1790, around 1750, the lightning rod is designed to provide lightning bolts with a safe path to ground the electricity so that it does not damage a building. Lightning rods have actually become a bit more important to have on a home or other building in recent years. Because the metal pipes that used to be installed for indoor plumbing and that could serve as lightning rods are being replaced by non conductive PVC pipes. What is a beaver tail? A beaver tail is a colorful name for a broad, flat, descending cloud that can be seen during some rainstorms. Beaver tails usually form outside any areas of falling precipitation. And they tend to swirl inward toward a wall cloud.
What is a bear's cage? The region of heavy rain and hail that usually forms on the southern and western side of a mesocyclone. But to the northeast of where a tornado may exist or may be forming. Is referred to by storm chasers as the bear's cage. This is the most dangerous part of the storm. As a tornado can be obscured behind a rain shield, striking with little warning. Visibility is low, and damaging hail, strong winds, and flash floods are also a hazard. What was the Great Flood of 1993? Heavy rainfall caused river flooding in 1993 that was so severe in Iowa that when observed by NOAA sensors, the state looked like a sixth Great Lake. The Mississippi River was seven miles wide at some points, and the Missouri River also spilled over its banks, causing nearly $20 billion in property losses, 48 deaths, and the evacuation of 85,000 people. Does lightning come from ice? Well, in a sense it does. The electric charge that builds up to create lightning is the result of snow and supercooled water droplets rubbing and colliding against each other. This generates a static charge just like when you rub your fuzzy socks against shag carpeting. Is static electricity similar to lightning? Yes. When you generate a static charge by, for example, wearing wool socks and rubbing your feet on a shag carpet, and then touching a piece of furniture or a person. The spark that is released is just like a miniature bolt of lightning. Static electricity charges can generate 40,000 volts or more. Which as some people know can be damaging to electronics, such as computers. Does lightning only occur during thunderstorms? Almost always, lightning is associated with thunderstorms. There are a few extraordinary cases. Though, where lightning has been observed without storm clouds present. Sometimes, for example, erupting volcanoes can produce smoke plumes that generate the electrical current necessary for lightning. Even more rarely, smoke from severe fires can mimic these conditions, as well. What is a bolt from the blue? This expression relates to the fact that lightning can strike even when there is no rain and the sun has come out. In other words, blue sky may appear overhead, but there may still be lightning generating clouds nearby.
How bright is lightning? The light from a lightning bolt is equal to the amount of illumination from about 100 million light bulbs. What have been some of the most destructive floods in history? In the United States, the failure of a dam in 1889 upstream from the community of Johnstown. Pennsylvania, killed 2,200 people. Some of the world's most catastrophe flooding takes place in China. A flood on the Huanghe River in 1931 killed 3.1 million people. Are there ways I can anticipate a tornado? Tornadoes are hard to predict with any certainty. And even meteorologists can only issue tornado advisories when conditions are right. Some people believe that hail, wind, or lightning will always precede a tornado, but that is not always the case. Though large hailstones and other inclement weather do often occur beforehand. Another belief is that if you observe the readings on a barometer suddenly dropping, you can expect a tornado to soon form. This is not an accurate method of prediction, either. Such air pressure drops can occur hours or days before an actual tornado hits. The best strategy is to simply listen closely to weather forecasts during bed. Storms and trust meteorologists to issue warnings when the conditions merit caution. What do many scholars believe caused the flood that Noah and his family survived in the Bible? Some archaeologists believe that, sometime between the years 5400 B.C.E. and 5200 B.C.E., the Euphrates River flooded the surrounding valley, covering an area of about 40,000 square miles, about 104,000 square kilometers. Although this flood did not encompass the globe, to those living in the area it certainly would have seemed like the end of the world and it could have inspired the well-known biblical story. How hot is lightning? The temperature of the air around a bolt of lightning is about 54,000 degrees Fahrenheit. 30,000 degrees Celsius, which is six times hotter than the surface of the sun. In cloud-to-ground lightning, energy seeks the shortest route to Earth. Which could be through a person's shoulder, down the side of the body, through the leg, and into the ground. As long as the lightning does not pass across the heart or spinal column, the victim can usually survive. What is a floodplain? A floodplain is the area surrounding a river that 
when unmodified by human structures, would normally be flooded during a river flood. A floodplain can be a few feet or many miles wide. Depending on the river flow as well as the local terrain. Even though levees and flood walls can be built. With homes and businesses built just behind them, the floodplain does not vanish. If the structures break or are damaged, the water from a flood can fill a floodplain. Just as it did before humans occupied it. What is a flash flood? Floods can happen relatively gradually, such as when water slowly rises over the banks of a river or lake. Or suddenly, such as when a dam or levee is damaged. When a flood happens quickly, it's called a flash flood. What is a wall cloud? Wall clouds can be warnings that a tornado is about to form in a bank of cumulonimbus clouds. As a mesocyclone expands and gains strength below the cumulonimbus clouds. It begins rotating as warm, humid air moves upward and condenses. Convergence causes the gathering wall cloud to rotate cyclonically. Though slowly compared to the tornadoes it could form. Storm chasers who observe such wall clouds know that they can form full-fledged tornadoes within an hour's time. Why do people live in floodplains? People have lived in floodplains for thousands of years. Fertile land for agriculture lines the floodplain, and the nearby water source makes life easier. Unfortunately, when the river does flood, these communities are severely damaged and people suffer. Hazard mitigation, such as levees, dams, dikes and other structures, attempt to limit damage during floods. Sometimes, when the structures fail, such as a levee breaking, large areas are inundated with water. Inhabitants of floodplains must balance the risks with the rewards of living in such an unpredictable environment. What should I do when a tornado approaches? Try to get to the lowest level of the building, unless you are in a mobile home or outdoors. In which case you should seek a sturdy and safe shelter. Many mobile home parks have a centrally located tornado shelter these days. Go to the center of the room and hide under a sturdy piece of furniture. Stay away from windows, hold onto the leg of a table or something else stable. And protect your head and neck with your arms. If your home has a basement, take shelter there. If not, interior bathrooms are usually the sturdiest rooms in a home. And you can protect yourself further by climbing into the bathtub.
How fast does lightning travel? The stroke channel of a lightning bolt is very narrow perhaps as little as half an inch, 1.25 centimeters. It is surrounded by a corona envelope or a glowing discharge. That can be as wide as 10 to 20 feet, 3 to 6 meters, in diameter. How fast does lightning travel? The stroke channel of a lightning bolt is very narrow perhaps as little as half an inch, 1.25 centimeters. It is surrounded by a corona envelope or a glowing discharge. That can be as wide as 10 to 20 feet, 3 to 6 meters, in diameter. How wide is a lightning bolt? Because of the intense glow of light that is emitted from lightning bolts, they may appear much wider than they actually are. The speed of lightning can vary from 100 to 1000 miles. 160 to 1,600 kilometers per second for the downward leader track, the return stroke is 87,000 miles. 140,000 kilometers per second, almost the speed of light. How wide is a lightning bolt? Because of the intense glow of light that is emitted from lightning bolts, they may appear much wider than they actually are. The speed of lightning can vary from 100 to 1000 miles. 160 to 1600 kilometers per second for the downward leader track, the return stroke is 87,000 miles. 140,000 kilometers per second, almost the speed of light. Is it dangerous to touch a person who has just been struck by lightning? No. A common myth is that people who have been hit by lightning maintain a dangerous electrical charge that can be transmitted to someone else who touches the victim. Actually, no such residual charge will remain and it is safe to touch them and give them medical assistance. Is it dangerous to touch a person who has just been struck by lightning? No. A common myth is that people who have been hit by lightning maintain a dangerous electrical charge that can be transmitted to someone else who touches the victim. Actually, no such residual charge will remain and it is safe to touch them and give them medical assistance. How many volts are in lightning?
a bolt of lightning discharges between 10 and 100 million volts of electricity. An average lightning stroke has 30,000 amperes. How long is a lightning stroke the visible length of the streak of lightning depends on the terrain and can vary greatly. In mountainous areas, where clouds are closer to the ground, the flash can be as short as 300 yards, 273 meters, whereas in flat terrain, where clouds are higher above the ground, the bolt can measure as long as 4 miles, 6.5 kilometers. The typical length is about 1 mile, 1.6 kilometers. But streaks of lightning up to 20 miles, 32 kilometers, have been recorded. How many volts are in lightning? A bolt of lightning discharges between 10 and 100 million volts of electricity. An average lightning stroke has 30,000 amperes. How long is a lightning stroke the visible length of the streak of lightning depends on the terrain and can vary greatly. In mountainous areas, where clouds are closer to the ground, the flash can be as short as 300 yards, 273 meters, whereas in flat terrain, where clouds are higher above the ground, the bolt can measure as long as 4 miles, 6.5 kilometers. The typical length is about 1 mile, 1.6 kilometers. But streaks of lightning up to 20 miles, 32 kilometers, have been recorded. How do you calculate how far away a lightning bolt is? After you see a flash of lightning, count the number of seconds until you hear the thunder. Divide the number of seconds by 5. And the result is the number of miles away that the lightning occurred. How do you calculate how far away a lightning bolt is? After you see a flash of lightning, count the number of seconds until you hear the thunder. Divide the number of seconds by 5. And the result is the number of miles away that the lightning occurred. Does lightning give off X-rays and radio waves? Almost since the invention of the radio, it has been known that lightning generates radio waves. Since this property of the bolts has long interfered with radio broadcasts. Lightning generates radio waves over a wide range of frequencies, especially in the AM broadcast band. More recently, Scientists have become fascinated by lightning's ability to create X-rays. The theory that this might occur was first proposed in the 1920s by Nobel. Prize-winning physicist C.T.R. Wilson, 1869 to 1959.
who theorized that lightning could accelerate electrons with sufficient speed to produce X-rays. For decades scientists thought Wilson was wrong. Because they believed the Earth's atmosphere was too thick and that air resistance would slow down electrons too much. However, by the 1990s scientists began to change their minds. And in 2003 experiments with controlled lightning strokes were performed by Martin Uman at the university of Florida and Joseph Dwyer at the Florida Institute of Technology that demonstrated lightning can indeed, produce enough energy to overcome any atmospheric drag. Such new research is causing scientists to rethink how lightning works. Does lightning give off X-rays and radio waves? Almost since the invention of the radio, it has been known that lightning generates radio waves. Since this property of the bolts has long interfered with radio broadcasts. Lightning generates radio waves over a wide range of frequencies, especially in the AM broadcast band. More recently, scientists have become fascinated by lightning's ability to create X-rays. The theory that this might occur was first proposed in the 1920s by Nobel. Prize-winning physicist C.T.R. Wilson, 1869 to 1959 who theorized that lightning could accelerate electrons with sufficient speed to produce x-rays for decades scientists thought wilson was wrong because they believed the earth's atmosphere was too thick and that air resistance would slow down electrons too much however by the 1990s scientists began to change their minds. And in 2003 experiments with controlled lightning strokes were performed by Martin Uman at the University of Florida and Joseph Dwyer at the Florida Institute of Technology that demonstrated lightning can indeed, produce enough energy to overcome any atmospheric drag. Such new research is causing scientists to rethink how lightning works. How many times does lightning strike the Earth each year? About 20 million volts of lightning are generated in the atmosphere every year. And during any particular second about 100 to 125 lightning strokes are occurring on our planet. Thunderstorms are very common in the Earth's atmosphere. With about 1,500 to 2,000 such storms being active at any given time. For astronauts circling the Earth's night side, this makes for an exciting view as numerous. White flashes are easily viewed from a space shuttle or from the International Space Station. How many times does lightning strike the Earth each year? About 20 million volts of lightning are generated in the atmosphere every year. And during any particular second about 100 to 125 lightning strokes are occurring on our planet. 
Thunderstorms are very common in the Earth's atmosphere. With about 1,500 to 2,000 such storms being active at any given time. For astronauts circling the Earth's night side, this makes for an exciting view as numerous. White flashes are easily viewed from a space shuttle or from the International Space Station. Where is lightning most likely to occur? Lightning tends to strike more often over land masses than over oceans. And it is more frequently seen in the tropics, where two-thirds of the electrical storms happen. Where is lightning most likely to occur? Lightning tends to strike more often over land masses than over oceans. And it is more frequently seen in the tropics, where two-thirds of the electrical storms happen. What are Caronophobia and Brontophobia? Caronophobia is the fear of lightning. And brontophobia sometimes called denitrophobia is the fear of thunder. What are caronophobia and brontophobia? Caronophobia is the fear of lightning. And brontophobia sometimes called denitrophobia is the fear of thunder. How much energy does one bolt of lightning contain? A bolt of lighting contains enough energy to light a 100 watt light bulb for three months. To be more technical, each stroke of lightning has about 30,000 amps and 1 million volts of power, on average. Some super bolts can have up to 300,000 amps of power. How much energy does one bolt of lightning contain? A bolt of lighting contains enough energy to light a 100 watt light bulb for three months. To be more technical, each stroke of lightning has about 30,000 amps and 1 million volts of power. On average, some super bolts can have up to 300,000 amps of power. Do people frequently die from lightning strokes? Depending on sources, anywhere from 5 to 30 percent of people who are hit by lightning die from their injuries. The danger is not so much from burns but rather from the electrical energy stopping a person's heart. This is why CPR usually is necessary when someone is struck unconscious by lightning.
More often, people who have been thus injured will be in severe pain and will be screaming as a result. While they of course will need medical attention. Their prognosis for survival is much better than that of the unconscious person. Do people frequently die from lightning strokes? Depending on sources. Anywhere from 5 to 30 percent of people who are hit by lightning die from their injuries. The danger is not so much from burns but rather from the electrical energy stopping a person's heart. This is why CPR usually is necessary when someone is struck unconscious by lightning. More often, people who have been thus injured will be in severe pain and will be screaming as a result. While they of course will need medical attention. Their prognosis for survival is much better than that of the unconscious person. What is one strange warning sign that lightning may be about to strike? As the static charge begins to build as a precursor to a lightning stroke, people's hair may stand on end and you can feel the static charge in the air. It has also been known to happen that a plastic raincoat will begin to rise into the air. Or that a cast fishing line will bizarrely remain suspended in air. Any of these signs are a warning to seek immediate shelter. What is one strange warning sign that lightning may be about to strike? As the static charge begins to build as a precursor to a lightning stroke, people's hair may stand on end and you can feel the static charge in the air. It has also been known to happen that a plastic raincoat will begin to rise into the air. Or that a cast fishing line will bizarrely remain suspended in air. Any of these signs are a warning to seek immediate shelter. What is a land spout? A land spout is, technically, a tornado, albeit a very weak one. Land spouts generally form from non-supercell storms, despite tending to be less strong than other tornadoes. They have been known to cause fatalities and should still be avoided at all costs. How many times does lightning strike the earth each year? About 20 million bolts of lightning are generated in the atmosphere every year. And during any particular second about 100 to 125 lightning strokes are occurring on our planet. Thunderstorms are very common in the Earth's atmosphere. With about 1,500 to 2,000 such storms being active at any given time. For astronauts circling the Earth's night side, this makes for an exciting view as numerous. 
White flashes are easily viewed from a space shuttle or from the International Space Station. Which month is the most dangerous for tornadoes in the United States? According to one study, May is the most dangerous month for tornadoes in the United States. With an average of 329, while February's average is the safest with only 3. In another study the months December and January were usually the safest. And the months having the greatest number of tornadoes were April, May, and June. In February, tornado frequency begins to increase. February tornadoes tend to occur in the central Gulf states. In March the center of activity moves eastward to the southeastern Atlantic states, where tornado activity peaks in April. In May the center of activity is in the southern plain states. In June this moves to the Northern Plains and Great Lakes area, into western New York. The most costly outbreak of tornadoes occurred in May 1999, when at least 74 tornadoes touched down in less than 48 hours in Oklahoma and Kansas. Including an F5 on the outskirts of Oklahoma City causing $1.1 billion in damage. How many volts are in lightning? A bolt of lightning discharges between 10 and 100 million volts of electricity. An average lightning stroke has 30,000 amperes. How long is a lightning stroke the visible length of the Streak of lightning depends on the terrain and can vary greatly. In mountainous areas, where clouds are closer to the ground, the flash can be as short as 300 yards, 273 meters, whereas in flat terrain, where clouds are higher above the ground, the bolt can measure as long as 4 miles, 6.5 kilometers. The typical length is about 1 mile, 1.6 kilometers. But streaks of lightning up to 20 miles, 32 kilometers, have been recorded. How do you calculate how far away a lightning bolt is? After you see a flash of lightning, count the number of seconds until you hear the thunder. Divide the number of seconds by 5. And the result is the number of miles away that the lightning occurred. What is a steam devil? In the Arctic, and, less often, Antarctic, or any other place where conditions are right. Cold air passing over warm areas of water can cause steam to rise. And when a whirlwind sweeps in at the same time, this steam or fog forms small steam devils. What causes a tornado?
scientists still do not fully understand how a tornado forms and why. The general theory is that tornadoes form from cloud systems that are slowly spinning. Usually in supercell storms, but weaker systems can produce them as well. The current belief is that a mesocyclone within a storm system is surrounded by pronounced variations in air temperature and downdraft. However, tornadoes have been known to form in cloud systems where strong winds and variations in temperature do not exist. Once a funnel begins to form, however, it can gain speed and strength in much the same way as ice skaters gain rotation speed as they pull their arms close to their bodies. How fast does lightning travel? The stroke channel of a lightning bolt is very narrow perhaps as little as half an inch, 1.25 centimeters. It is surrounded by a corona envelope or a glowing discharge. That can be as wide as 10 to 20 feet, 3 to 6 meters, in diameter. Does lightning give off X-rays and radio waves? Almost since the invention of the radio, it has been known that lightning generates radio waves. Since this property of the bolts has long interfered with radio broadcasts. Lightning generates radio waves over a wide range of frequencies, especially in the AM broadcast band. More recently, scientists have become fascinated by lightning's ability to create X-rays. The theory that this might occur was first proposed in the 1920s by Nobel. Prize-winning physicist C.T.R. Wilson, 1869-1959 Who theorized that lightning could accelerate electrons with sufficient speed to produce X-rays? For decades scientists thought Wilson was wrong. Because they believed the Earth's atmosphere was too thick and that air resistance would slow down electrons too much. However, by the 1990s scientists began to change their minds. And in 2003 experiments with controlled lightning strokes were performed by Martin Uman at the University of Florida and Joseph Dwyer at the Florida Institute of Technology that demonstrated lightning can indeed, produce enough energy to overcome any atmospheric drag. Such new research is causing scientists to rethink how lightning works. How does lightning work? The anatomy of a lightning stroke is surprisingly complex. For lightning to occur, of course, there needs to be a source of electricity, an electrical storm. Thunderstorms contain clouds that work like capacitors. The tops of the clouds have a positive charge and the bottoms are negatively charged. Scientists believe that this electrical charge may build up as the result of electrons being exchanged by particles within the clouds as they collide with one another due to temperature differences within the cloud, though just how this happens is a matter of debate. 
as the difference between the positively charged cloud tops and negatively charged bottoms increases, an electric field is generated. As the charge within the cloud builds, it has an effect on the surface of the earth directly below. As well as objects on top of the ground. The negative field on the bottoms of the clouds repels electrons on the ground. Which in turn causes the land below the storm to become positively charged. As the charge builds and builds, the air between earth and cloud becomes ionized air molecules. Break down into electrons and positively charged ions transitioning into a plasma state. This plasma now serves as a conductor between the clouds and the ground below. Or to other clouds, or into the surrounding air. Next, the cloud sends out step leaders, which are precursors to the oncoming flash of lightning. Think of them as ionized paths and streams of electrons that are like feelers that the cloud sends out. Searching for the best path for the lighting bolt to flow through. Sometimes they may be visible as faintly glowing purplish streaks. Meanwhile, as the step leaders are sending exploring fingers outward. The positively charged ground or other receiving object is sending out feelers upwards. These feelers, called positive streamers, don't always connect with the step leaders. But when they do the circuit is completed and the fireworks are ready to begin. Positive streamers can emerge from any inanimate or living object, including people. Like railway workers completing a railroad. Once the two ends of the path join, the train can drive through. This is the lightning bolt, an explosion of energy that occurs as Nature attempts to equalize the charge between cloud and surface. What is a gust nato? Seen near thunderstorm outflows, a gust nato is a weak vortex that does not touch the clouds. Gust nattos usually do little more damage than breaking some tree branches and overturning lawn furniture. What is a 100 year flood? A 100-year flood refers not only to the size of a flood, but also to the odds of it occurring. A 100-year flood has a 1%, or 1 in 100, chance of occurring in any given year. It has no relationship to the frequency of occurrence. The magnitude of such a flood is relative to the frequency of occurrence. So a 100-year flood is much larger than any run-of-the-mill annual flood. A 500-year flood has only a 1 in 500, 0.2%. Chance of occurring in any given year and would be much larger and more devastating than a 100-year flood. How can I obtain a flood map of my community? The best way to see a flood insurance rate map, firm. For your area would be to contact your local government.
their planning or emergency management agency should have the firm maps available. Purchasing them from FEMA is not recommended because the maps change often and are best interpreted by a planning or emergency expert. Are tornadoes often formed in hurricanes? It is fairly common for tropical storms and hurricanes to generate tornado activity. And sometimes several tornadoes touch down in a single storm. One of the best examples of this was 1967's Hurricane Beulah, during which 115 tornadoes were seen. In 2004 Hurricane Francis generated 123 tornadoes, the most ever recorded. What are tornadoes? Tornadoes are very powerful, yet tiny storms that have destructive winds capable of leveling buildings and other structures. Winds in a tornado form a dark gray column of air, though white, bluish, or even red is possible. Depending on how the sun's light rays might be reflecting off the tornado. With the center of the tornado acting like a vacuum, picking up objects and moving them along the storm's path. Tornadoes can last from a few minutes to an hour or more. They are one of the most destructive forces in nature. With the largest tornadoes sometimes having diameters of over 1 mile, 1.6 kilometers. And wreaking a path of destruction over 100 miles, 160 kilometers, long. Where is lightning most likely to occur? Lightning tends to strike more often over land masses than over oceans. And it is more frequently seen in the tropics, where two-thirds of the electrical storms happen. <laughs> 